but all the burrs are off. They've been ground down so you can run your fingers over them. You won't be hurt or anything like that. And um, so now we've just got to get into the process of marking these holes because we've got to drill these holes out. And you see that piece of bracket is behind there. I think it's moved slightly because you can see the edge through that hole right there. So I need to move it a little bit, I think. Unless that's, that may just be the paint. Oh, that's probably just the paint that I used to mark. But the line is right beside there. We want it to overlap enough to where I'm not going to blow those holes out when I run a drill through it. But um, either way, I've got it in almost the perfect place. I'll check it again before I mark. And I'm just going to use a permanent marker, the same one I used to make the lines. It's like it's more like a silver paint marker, but it's a Sharpie, and it looks like silver paint. But uh, I'm going to mark those holes, and then I'll come back and drill through it with a, a steel drill bit. And um, I'm going to go ahead and try to put two of them so it's not wobbly or anything. And we'll put our bolts in after that. But what we're going to have to do, I've made the decision for this one is the support bracket that piece right there that is going to be behind there it needs to be on this side and uh the reason being is this is going to be the bottom mounting bracket and there's going to be a difference the other one's going to mount on this side when you lock these in with the screws they'll go into here and here this piece of metal for the bottom um it needs to be flat because it actually sits on top of the lower rail that holds the monitor and you don't want any kind of uh, raised area here because then when you tighten your bolts down there'll be a slight gap like an eighth of an inch and you know I, I just don't want that I want it to be an, a nice clean mating surface across there so we're going to put that bracket on on that side but the top this same type of bracket those holes actually um, the bolts go up through this first and go into the top rail on a Donkey Kong. It's kind of strange to me. I was like, well, huh, when you put the monitor in, wouldn't it be easier to just set it in place and have this bracket set on the top rail and the one on the bottom set on the bottom rail and then put your bolts in? But for some reason, they come from the factory with the bolts running up through here from behind and then into the top rail. So that means on the other one, I need to put this little piece of bracket on the inside and I'll position it as properly as I can and make the screw holes and you would think oh well you can switch them out back if you need to well you really can't because once you have these snugged in you know and they get in here 90 degrees to this piece of angle then once you make your screw holes it's only going to fit either on this side or the other side because it will change the way the screw holes line up because of the thicknesses of the metal either being put on the inside of these brackets or on the outside just wanted to show you guys I got it marked and Here's that silver Sharpie. I swear it's more like a paint marker. I guess it's just because I'm not used to seeing silver come out of a Sharpie. But it works really good. Got my holes marked. And you see it is really close to blowing out on each side. But um, even if it did, there's enough metal there to hold that. You know, there's going to be a washer over it and then a tap. But um, I didn't mean to get it that close, but there really wasn't much choice. I had to cut that specific amount out of these brackets. And unless I cut it out of the place that had no holes, I was going to end up dead center in a hole or in between two. And I just thought this ended up being the best way to do it. These fit into these screw holes on here with just a tiny bit of play. So it has just this very slight amount of wobble. So that is the exact um, width as the shaft of this drill bit. So it'll make a hole that's just perfect for that screw. Um, now, if I need to, I can wallow this out just enough so that it matches these holes. Because once I want uh, run the drill bit in here, it's going to be slightly smaller than the diameter of what I've marked with the marker here. Because these holes are just slightly more than quarter inch. But uh, it, I want to clean the uh, rough edges up anyway, so I can take one of those bits on the Dremel. And if I want to widen it up so that the entire painted area here is covered, I can do that and make it the exact size but uh, if all these line up perfectly and this seems to make this bracket nice and tight and like all the screws fit without having to force them then there's really no reason for me to widen them up i can just clean the burrs off with one of those bits on the on the dremel so okay guys here's pretty much the finished product um i didn't show you any of the drilling holes because they wouldn't you know it wouldn't much to that and there's enough boring stuff on here you don't want to watch me drill holes but uh, I did make one boo-boo there, here. And I, I had 
put my drill bit down in the wrong hole, but it's no big deal. If I put the washers on, it covers it up. But the reason I don't want to put the washers on, I'll show you in a second. See, this puts them together. Now, they're not dead together. But if I made the holes a little bit more wallowed out, you know, with a drill bit, or if I go grind them, I can, I can make them touch completely. But, like I said, I've got a quarter inch play on each side because of this monitor. If you see bird seed, I'm sorry, I'm close to my bird. He makes a mess. Like that right there. And that right there. Keep your stuff over there. But anyway, um, see, here's what we were trying to build. And it, it did work out successfully. But if you take a look, let's see, get these lines up. You see the heads of the screws? They're touching the picture tube practically. And it takes away from how much play I've got over here. You see how you've got a little play to move it up and left and right and, and back? Now I have a little less play than I would like just because it's kind of a tight fit. And the heads of the screws, I, I knew that, well, I knew that the thickness of the metal on this one might be a problem because that adds, you know, like an extra eighth of an inch. But I forgot about the screws. I really did. And then you add the washers to that and it just about takes away any chance of wiggle room, you know, moving this around. So I took the washers off, and it looks fine without them. As a matter of fact, I think it looks better without them. I just thought it might help tightening them up. But um, these Keps nuts, as they call them, and I, I don't even know what that stands for, but uh, they've got these built-in little washers that kind of bite into the surface, and that'll keep them locked in so they shouldn't come loose. But I actually think it works out, you know, pretty good the way it is. But I'm going to have to put the bolts in here and strap this on here and um, do that after I finish the other one. And just hope that the Donkey Kong upper and lower rails don't need to be moved like up or down like a, a great amount. Because uh, I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room. But anyway, this is what the final product looks like. Just figured I'd show you guys my jig. Um, I've changed it. I had, I had that little one before there I was using, but... I changed it to this 2x4, and you can actually slide the bracket up on there, you see? And I've got my holes marked. This is the second one we're working on. And I've got a couple of holes that are drilled through here. Well, I've got a pivot screw, and I just come in and move that right over the hole I've got marked. And it looks like it needs to go slightly right. You just, I mean, you just nudge it just barely. I don't even know if I moved it, but you just basically, you want to make sure you don't see any black. You don't want to be too far down, too far up, too far left and right. I, I believe I'm pretty much centered right around there. And then when you get it to that point, let me look outside the camera. Get it to that point, then you take and tighten this screw down into the wood, and it clamps that bracket. And since I've got it set so it can't even move on either side hardly, the only thing it could do would be try to move out. But since you've got it where it's flush against that 2x4 and it's clamped down, it's probably not going to move. But see, now you can come along with your drill and you just, well, okay, pretend i got a drill bit. <laughs> I was tightening the screws up. You tighten this one down and once you make sure that it's still in the viewport correctly, just take your drill and go straight down, keep it perpendicular and start drilling. And it helps to put your hand like right here maybe and just kind of hold the whole mechanism in place unless you can clamp this 2x4 down or screw it into another piece of scrap wood or something. But uh, I just hold it with my hand right about here just to keep it from wiggling any. And it just goes straight down with my screwdriver into the hole. And you'll feel it when it bites because it'll get a little bit harder to push and let up on your pressure some because when it grabs that metal, it's going to try to turn this whole works around clockwise. But uh, just keep a good grip on it. And it'll help you break through. As soon as it breaks through the metal, it's gravy. You just pull it back out, clear your hole out, and undo the mechanism. And it usually helps keep your hole pretty good and straight. Sorry, I didn't get to show you the drilling, but it's one-man operation. I can't hold my phone. I don't have a tripod for it. But uh, anyway, once you're finished drilling, I, I drilled down in there. You can see we went down went all the way through the metal and went through the next piece of wood. And I just actually picked the whole mechanism up and I dumped all my shavings, metal and wood, out onto this piece of cardboard. I'll clean them up later so we don't get metal filings everywhere. But that's where we did the other one. And uh, 
So this is your results. Say it's okay to go down the next piece of wood, just use a scrap and tap the filings off. And works pretty good. Kept me almost dead center. It's a pretty good technique. If you don't have a drill press, you got a drill press. See how this lines up. And you don't have to keep it here. On the next one, you can move it over or whatever. But you do you do have to um, move this top piece. Now, I'm just using this as a pivot. You can take this loose and put both screws back in each time. But if I leave it in there, I can just pivot. And when I pivot, I can either line up the exact same spot and use it for each hole. So like right here, I would just slide on down. And to make sure I'm right over that, you move this part back in place and look down through it. And see there? Pretty good guess, Tori. I'm, I'm practically right over it. You just want to make sure you don't go too far down. And you don't want to go too far up. And make sure the left to right is okay. Sometimes you want to wiggle it. looks like I might could go slightly left there. Let's see. It looks like I can see a little black. I'm trying to look at my stuff and show you guys at the same time. See if I go to the left a little. I'll move bracket. See, it starts moving. You start seeing some of the black on the right-hand side. But you want to get it dead center. The reason it's so hard to move left and right is because where I drilled the first hole, there's probably a slight burr on it. And I've got this wood sandwiched around it. And it's getting a bite. But anyway, that's how you do it. Set it up like that. Clamp this screw down. Just run it in. Make sure you've got it far enough away so you don't go into your metal bracket or you'll never get through it. And once you clamp it down good and tight, you might want to give another turn or two to this screw just to make sure it's good and sandwiched. And I put my hand right here, and I put the drill down in there, and I just start drilling. And it takes a good minute or so, unless you're just putting a lot of pressure or you've got a fantastic bit or something. And then it will break through. And when it, break through, when it breaks through, you better have a good grip on this because it will try to twist this whole thing um, clockwise. And so just make sure you got your hand out of the way of the bit and just keep a good grip on it. So we're going to do the rest of them and I'll show you in a few minutes. Well, for some reason in Donkey Kong, this flush part all the way across here has to go up under the top rail and that's the way it's bolted. And I'm sure you could do it the other way, but that's just not the way they do it. Um, I don't know. It seems kind of weird, but um, I just made sure that I put that bracket on the inside so that it wouldn't be sticking up over here and causing like an extra eighth of an inch thickness because I want this surface here to make flat against that rail because there's a very flat part of the rail that this is going to mount right against. Um, it's kind of got a, a horseshoe shape if you look from the end of the rail, like the profile of it, but that horseshoe is facing up in the cabinet and the flat part's facing down. This is going to mate with that flat part, so that's why we've done it this way. But anyway, enough of that. I do want to tell you one more thing before I show you that this lines up with the tube. Take a look at these screws. Notice anything different? Look right where the screwdriver goes into the Phillips slot. These have a flat surface on them. These don't. Now these were supposed to be exactly the same. The ones with the flat surface on top come out of this package right here, the clear one. See, I've got one more. And the, the rest of them with the rounded heads come out of here. But if you take a look at the SKUs and the description and everything, they are exactly the same. So <laughs> I don't understand why they made that change. I mean, maybe it's just a cosmetic change. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they think it helps the screwdriver go in there easier. If you ask me, they probably did it because, hey, that's a little bit of metal for each screw they save. <laughs> But uh, it doesn't bother me. I just didn't even notice it until now. I did see that in an earlier video where I was comparing these to the screws that I already had with this frame. There's only a couple of them. And I noticed these were a little flat. And I said something like, uh, well, they're almost identical, you know, except for the length. But I thought all of these were that way. And I'm just now noticing. But anyway, let's take a look and see. Got the tube here. And I went ahead and mounted that one to it. And I put the little ground thing. This has got a weird set of grounding fingers instead of a ground strap that goes all the way around and contacts the DAG. 
that's the only one I've ever seen like that, but people say they've seen it, and I've seen it online, too. And uh, it's got little receivers there that you can hook wires to. The little spade lug, lug type connection. But anyway, we did get it mounted on there, that, that one we just did. And we got just a hair bit of clearance, you can see there, between the screws and the tube. So we've got maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch that we can play with up and down. And the same with left and right, which I don't think we need to left and right because those slots there will allow you to do all that that you need, really. But here's the top of the tube. Now let's see. This won't stay, of course, but I just want to see how this lines up until so I put the bolts through it. And I think I might be one bolt shy to get this hooked up. Might have to go to Lowe's and buy another one. But, yeah, it looks like it's going to line up. Bolts are going to go through. Got a little bit of wiggle room. Not too much, like I said, because we're real close to the CRT. And uh, I think it's going to work out fine. I just want to give you guys a shot of the monitor with the brackets in place. I tightened down the bolts, um, the union bolts and nuts, and got that real good and tight. So as far as the monitor is concerned, this is just one solid frame. I mean, it's really good and stout. I've done picked the monitor up by it to make sure. And uh, I put the uh, special little ground fingers on there. And down here the same way. Let's see, this is going to be, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, this will be the top. Obviously, I set it up so the sticker would be on top, right? <laughs> I actually didn't think about it until a few minutes after I'd done it. I said, oh yeah, well, at least I did get it right because I do want to see the sticker on the top of the back of the monitor. Um, And uh, when I was putting the screws in for the corners, these little ears or whatever, um, I had two original ones like I showed you. This was one of the brand new ones, and I had to go hunt down another one. That's why there's one that takes a flathead screwdriver. But it's the same length as the original one, just like a 5 8 and the same thread pitch as these right here. But it just has a, a flathead a screwdriver that you have to use with it. And uh, luckily, you know, the way those packs were when I bought them, I had one extra screw, but I had two extra taps. So one of the taps or nuts actually fit on that one, like I said, because the thread pitch was the same. But the reason I installed them on this way is uh, I actually started to put them the other way. And I started noticing on forums and pictures everywhere, almost every Donkey Kong and other monitors even that I saw, some of them would, uh, like if they had a screw and a nut, they would have the nut visible in the front and not the screw. And I think that's because some probably brackets just have a uh, stud sticking off that's threaded and uh, you put the nut on the front but this one doesn't have that so we're, we put the screws in backwards and we put the nuts on the front probably won't ever have to take them out because we can just take the whole monitor off by leaving these brackets on and just unhooking them from the upper and lower rail on the Donkey Kong but anyway um, I left them a little loose so that I can move these a little bit because I don't know exactly where those slots are going to line up with the rails on top and the bottom. I want to make sure I've got a little play there before I put those in. <laughs> 